Hey, horse lovers. So we have some answers regarding Prince Charming and how his MRI went at Ohio State. And I'm gonna share all the details that I possibly can with you. So this is a very hard video to make. It's hard to categorize my thoughts and explain my reasoning and all of the variables that are associated with Prince Charming's situation. If you haven't watched the most recent video that I posted prior to him going to Ohio State, I highly suggest doing that so you can hear a little bit more about his story and understand the picture as a whole. So I'm going to do my best to talk to you logically and not just put emotion into this right now and explain what they found, what our decision is, and what we are going to do proceeding forward. A couple days ago, I took him down to Ohio State because he was going to get an MRI because he's had this ongoing lameness that we are trying to resolve. And clearly, we figured there was much more going on than just arthritis and his other current issues. The MRI went really well. And right afterwards, I did have a Zoom meeting with the doctor at Ohio State. And we went over the MRI and all of our options in detail. So essentially, Prince Charming, in the beginning, he had a hind end injury. So it was an SI ligament injury and that did heal. However, it did relapse a little bit because obviously you need to keep the muscles strong. So in order to continue rehabbing them, you have to keep working them. But over the winter, he was lame and the ground was just so awful. So unfortunately we weren't able to do that as much, but I did everything I can. There's nothing else I could have done. It's still 100% improved, but he did weaken a little bit in that area. However, that's not the concern. So we already know that he had cough and joint arthritis in both hooves. It was a little bit worse in the right front. We also know that he had high low and his angles were actually really fantastic. His sole depth had improved quite a bit. So that was like miraculous. But then on the MRI, we did find some lesions. The MRI results showed that he had lesions and this was a deep digital tendon flexor injury. So he actually had lesions in both the front left and the front right. However, the front right was much more substantial and it was indeed a tear. So it was a significant tear and it was all the way down in his hoof capsule up past his fetlock. So it was a significant tear, like I said. Reading about this injury, it completely made sense. Basically how I was saying when we rehabbed his hind, his front end got a lot better. And of course we were thinking it was the high low, the arthritis, but what was really happening is we were healing that hind end in a somewhat similar format with resting, stall rest, hand walking, so on and so forth. So reading more about that injury, it, like I said, completely makes sense. The patterns, everything that went into it. And I will put some articles down in the description so you can read more on that injury. Um, I'm not going to go into super detail about it, but yeah, you can kind of read those articles if you're interested. So essentially we were doing a little bit of rehab for the front unknowingly when we were healing the hind. However, obviously it's not the exact same type of rehab. So of course it was re-injured because it was undiscovered because it was masked by the arthritis, the high-low, all of the other issues that were going on. So essentially with Prince Charming, he has cough and joint arthritis in both hooves. He also has navicular in both hooves, and he has the deep digital tendon flexor injury tear as well. So that is a whole lot of issues that are present. And discussing with the vet was really hard because there are treatment options, but we also have to consider quality of life and honestly what makes sense for him and this situation. And I'm gonna get into that a little bit more. Right now, again, I am just trying to talk to you logically. I am really, really struggling right now and having a hard time, and this is not a fun video to make, but I want to keep you informed. This is why I have my YouTube channel, is to bring you along in the journey of owning horses. It's not rainbows and butterflies, especially when you get into rehabbing horses or getting horses from all walks of life, like what I do. It is not easy. It honestly sucks sometimes, but I want to share these moments with you so that people truly have an understanding that it is a lot of time, money, expense, heartache, and there is a lot of reward as well. So just know that I really am struggling putting this out there, but I want to do it because that's my commitment to this channel and to the horse community and people who are trying to learn and people who want to rescue or rehab or take on project horses or give horses a second chance, whatever the case may be. So upon talking to Ohio State, 
and the veterinarian who I believe honestly are some of the best of the best. I am very happy with how things were handled and how things were explained to me in such detail. So that was fabulous. Okay, so really getting down to what the treatment options would be. Essentially, Prince Charming will never be a riding horse. That is highly, highly unlikely. And of course, like, whatever, like it is what it is. That's okay. That's not, you know, yeah, that would be great. And of course, like that is what the goal would be. But obviously, I'm not going to try to make him something he's not. So as of right now, he's definitely not a candidate to be a riding horse. The other aspect was we can do PRP injections. We can do stem cell and he would have to be in a stall for three to eight months, um, just hand walking every day and a somewhat similar rehab to what we were doing with no riding would be likely. And that's okay. I'm just explaining in detail what was said to me. Okay. So he would not be living a normal horse life. And all of these treatments would be done just to possibly, possibly have him sound as a pasture horse, as a companion horse. So right now he is not suitable to be a companion horse or a pasture horse. And I can never, ever sell this horse given these details and these findings after this um, MRI. So all of these things would have to be done in order for him to just exist in a field, in a pasture. Tons of money, tons of rest, living in a stall, maybe being able to go out with friends after tons of rehab, and the likelihood of him being re-injured is extremely high. A lot of times with this type of injury, they re-injure it on a consistent basis, so you would have to start all over again. With all of these issues combined and already trying for 12 months, I just... I don't, I don't think it's fair to him and I don't think it makes sense to put him in a stall to potentially be re-injured just to exist. I really, I have thought so much about this and I honestly, I'm just so disorganized on like what to say right now because there's so many thoughts behind it and I'm not looking for people to say, oh, try this, try this. Listen, I have been obsessing about this for months and months. I have been through it. I am the one who's been rehabbing him, walking him every single day, spending the money, putting the time in, taking care of him. And I just don't think it's fair to, again, like keep him in a stall and just for him to potentially be able to just be a companion horse. And I'm not saying, oh, well, he's a companion horse. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, just, you know, whatever. No, I'm talking quality of life for him. To me, that is not a good life for a horse. Horses need friends. They need freedom. They need forage. And they, they need movement. It's like a double-edged sword. If I was to keep him in a stall, it's going to make his arthritis worse and he's just gonna be getting really stiff. And I just, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think I can do that to him um, with the likelihood of him being re-injured. And that is a very high probability. And to be completely honest, here in Michigan, our ground changes so much. I mean, like, yeah, it's great right now, but what if I do all of this rehab and Come winter, I mean, he just takes a weird step or, you know, it gets a little bit muddy. Even if I kept him out of the mud, like even if I did everything I needed to do, I mean, all it takes is just something weird to happen. And then we restart this process all over again. And, and it just, I don't think that's a life for a horse. And I, I don't think it's fair. Um, you know, he's going to be, he's 18 years old at this point. And with the navicular and the arthritis and then his hind issues again I just there's there's too there's too many things going on and it's mainly the prognosis if I was told yes do this rehab he's way less likely to be injured do the injections do all of this and then he can be a pasture horse you bet I would do that okay and that would be fine but that's not the case here and I talked to a lot of friends who have been through this process as well obviously talked to my vet other professionals and they 100% agree that that would not be fair. And I wanna explain, the injections 
are not going to treat the issues. None of these issues are fixable. All you're doing with these injections are masking the pain. And that's exactly what the vet at Ohio State told me as well. Basically, anything we do is just going to maybe, maybe keep him comfortable for a short period of time. Essentially, you keep doing injections, but they aren't going to continue to work forever. And just with all of the information I've gathered and what I've been through with him, I truly, truly believe that the kindest option is to put Prince Charming down. And that is what I'm going to do. It is not easy. And I'm trying again to just talk to you logically right now. I'm trying to explain my thought process. And I, again, I talked with my vet and Ohio State and they 100% back my decision to euthanize Prince Charming. And this is gonna be very, very difficult. I have tried so hard but you know what? I tried. Nobody else would have done this for an auction horse. I knew he had issues. I knew that it was going to be a process. I knew that this could potentially be the outcome. Like, yes, I definitely didn't think it was going to be this severe. But given the multitude and the several issues that are present, I just feel like this is the kindest option. Keeping a horse in a stall with the likelihood they're going to end back up there again due to being re-injured is not kind. That does not make sense. That is not a life for a horse. Like I said, if it was just do this rehab, get him through it, he's going to be good to go. Absolutely. Riding horse or not, even if he was just going to be companion sound, I don't care. That's like what originally I thought with the hind end. You do this rehab, he's going to be good to go. Great. Out 100%. I would put all the money into that. And it's not just about money, okay? This is about quality of life for him. And again, I'm not looking for suggestions on what I should do, blah, blah, blah. No. I am actually a very strong-willed person, and I think a lot about the decisions that I make. Especially now that, like, I'm an adult and in my 30s. So... This is not lighthearted, and I have never, ever had to put down a horse that's in my care, ever. So this decision was not made lightly, and I just want you to know that. And it will not be the last time because of the work I do, and because things just happen with horses. I, I just also want to say thank you so much for all of your support in the last video. I mean, you guys just poured out so much love and it means the world to me. And I do appreciate when you guys are giving me suggestions and helping, but at this point, there isn't suggestions. There's no supplement or anything out there that is gonna fix this. Fix it. There's things that can aid it. But like I said, it doesn't make sense with all of the variables that are associated with what is going on with Prince Charming. Also, I had some people bring up that Prince Charming didn't look like he was in pain. And this is just a really great topic to bring up. Horses are prey animals, okay? They also can't talk. They can express, but they cannot talk. So in the wild, they literally will mask their pain at extreme amounts so that they are not killed or attacked by a predator. So many horses suffer in silence and pain, and we cannot possibly sit there and say that a horse is not in pain when they're clearly limping and extremely lame. He is in pain, 100%. Yes, he's not skin and bones with scars and cuts all over him where he's on his last limb of life, like just existing. No but he absolutely is in pain. And I also don't want him to suffer. And this could continue to get worse. I mean, he, because it's already injured and he re-injures it, that could be even worse for him and extremely painful. Like something really bad could happen. And I just, again, I don't think it makes sense. Um, so I just wanted to address the pain response. We, we can't, we cannot assess that he, other than that we know he is in pain, for sure. I was able to say goodbye to him at Ohio State. I knew that this was a potential outcome and I did say my goodbyes and they offer cremation services there. So I figured this is what makes sense. His shoes were pulled for the MRI and he's extremely uncomfortable barefoot right now. 
and their specialized farrier was out of town for a conference, I think. So he would have had to ride home barefoot in the trailer for three and a half, four hours. So I didn't think that made any sense. So I decided to have him put down there and cremated. It's just, it's, it's really, really tough. I knew that this was a possibility, but I truly was not expecting this, I guess. Um, I was hoping it was something that was straightforward. It was straightforward, thankfully. We have, we have answers now. But I was hoping it was something crystal clear, like, yep, you do this and it's, it's good to go. But that's not the case on top of everything else. And like I said, I cannot ever rehome this horse, even if I did decide to try to do all of this, which I've already explained to you why I'm not going to. And I wholeheartedly believe it's the best for him. This isn't just about me. This is about him too, okay? Obviously, this is all about him. And I can't trust people to do this type of diagnostic and care for a horse that can't be ridden. And I'm not saying I feel that way because obviously I'm doing it. But unfortunately, in the horse world, horses are not valued if they're not rideable or usable to an extent. Um, obviously, there are tons of people out there who do wonderful things. But just in general, I just know in my heart that I could not let him go in the condition he's in. If he was for sure a great companion horse and he could just live comfortably, then great. But you have to jump through hoops to make him just comfortable to stand and live. So... It is very, very unfortunate. I just, I just, I'm so freaking sad. It's even worse because he's just such a sweet, beautiful, kind horse. And it's just, it's just not fair. It's not fair for any horse, but it's just, why? Why is it always like the really good ones? And I don't know. I'm just, I'm heartbroken especially after seeing him improve. And I know people are going to be like, oh, well, he improved. There's a chance. No, he already went through a similar rehab and it was re-injured. Obviously, like I said, we didn't know it was there. And I know you would take, we would take a slightly different approach. I'm very, very confident in my decision. Okay. But I think that's the hardest part. And I also think like if this was discovered earlier, maybe it could have been different because we would have been handling it different from the beginning. But, um, you know, you can sit there and go, what if, what if, what if? But honestly, you have to look at what's going on right now in the moment. And when I do that, my gut, my gut tells me that it's not fair and that putting him down is the right thing to do. And I'm going to go with my gut because that's what's important. I... When I sit there and think about it and I put my emotions into it, it's hard, but then I rely on my gut and it's 100%. Yeah, and Kyle feels the exact same way. Um, and Kyle will give it to me straight, you know. He is an amazing husband, but he will tell me exactly what he thinks. He has opinions, which is good. He is very opinionated. And my friends will tell me too. And people who have rehabbed horses and my vet. And they are 100% supportive. So I know that it's right. And I hope that you understand that this is part of what I do. And unfortunately, may happen again in the future. But I've learned a lot from this experience as well. I knew, again, that he was going to need a lot of work and rehab. But it also taught me so much. Prince Charming has brought so many people so much joy from his auction video, from his process, and he has also taught everybody, including myself, so much. And he's just like, Appaloosas are my favorite breed, okay, favorite. So not that that like matters, but just the fact that it's like he's everything I want in a horse. So the fact that this is the, the ending is so sad. And I was, you know, obviously I try not to have expectations, especially if I know they're going to have issues when I buy them. Um, but my dream for him was to work with him, you know, get him trained and healthy, obviously, like get him healthy and then work with him and then find him just like a person who truly loves and values him. And this just goes to show that we can't just be selfish about our wants and needs 
and we have to think of the animal and the quality of life. And I know that when Prince Charming passes on into the next world, that he will understand. And, you know, I've had this conversation with him that whatever is meant to be, I'm going to do what's best for him. And I wanted him to know that. I know that sounds hocus pocus, but whatever. I'm, I am spiritual and I truly believe that I will meet him again and he will understand. It's sort of a unwritten spiritual contract between horse and owner. So yeah, I'm sick of standing in the same spot. So I'm going to go walk by the other horses. Hi baby, it's Jafar. So you to go baby. I just want to be by the other horses right now. Um, the other horses just bring me so much comfort and happiness. Um, I also wanted to bring up, somebody was talking about donations. And I want to say that I really do appreciate people wanting to do a GoFundMe for Prince Charming. And I also want to say, like, yes, it's expensive, but I also plan for this when I get horses or especially a horse like him who I know is going to have um, issues and need a lot of medical care. But here's the truth. This is my take on it. When I take on a horse, it is my responsibility. So while I was making this video, I got a call from Ohio State. And after thinking a lot about it, I did decide to proceed with putting him down. And it's really hard. I just feel so bad. <laughs> but I know I did everything I could for what made sense for his future and the prognosis. <laughs> it's just so hard and I just, I know that what I'm doing makes sense for him and it's the kindest thing regardless of what anybody else thinks. I know that this is truly what makes sense for him. And again, I just wanna say I appreciate all of you and um, it, it really means so much to me. It's bittersweet, but we did hit 100K. And I'm bringing this up because I want to be so excited about it, but I'm just so sad right now. But it just shows how much support all of you horse lovers have for the mission and the horses at Free Spirit Equestrian. And I really, really appreciate it. But as I was saying, in regards to donations, when I take a horse on, it is my responsibility. I'm not gonna get a horse and then beg people to help treat the horse because I'm not a rescue, okay? I'm not a nonprofit. I am taking these horses on as my personal horses. If there was some crazy situation I was asking for donations, just know it's a really bad situation and I need help. But I'm prepared to do this and I, did everything I could for him and I spent tons of money and I worked really hard to be able to do that. But that's what makes me really proud of what I do because I do it myself and I do whatever the horse needs. If he needed $10,000 of treatments and I knew it was going to give him a quality of life and made sense, I would do it. Okay. So thank you again for everything you do. The best way to support us is to buy items off our wish list. That is the best way to support Free Spirit Equestrian. And YouTube also offers super thanks. But I don't expect anybody to do that, but they're there if you want to help. That's it. I appreciate just the comments that I read, everything. You guys watching the videos, that's what means the most to me. Just hanging out with Belle here. You're such a good girl. You sweet baby. You're such a good girl. So really sad what's happening today but also new life is coming so that is the positive and I just have a lot to focus on with her and the other horses and a few other things are happening as well that were happening before all this with Prince Charming so I'll be updating you on that but um I'm thankful for every horse that comes my way whatever case that may be I'm so thankful that I crossed paths with Prince Charming because who knows what the heck would have happened to him. He would have either suffered and been uncomfortable or never given a chance or passed around um, or somebody would have been continuing to ride him. I, I don't know. So I'm very thankful 
and I have my other babies to bring me comfort. Thank goodness. Plus Penelope and Koa and Kyle and my friends and you guys and my family. So that makes me feel a lot more at peace. I will be posting a tribute video of Prince Charming on Sunday, uh, celebrating his life here at Free Spirit Equestrian and everything he offered to all of us, joy, happiness, and education. So that will be posted then. Um, in the meantime, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so you don't miss anything Free Spirit Equestrian. And I'll see you next time, horse lovers. Bye.